Hello everyone and welcome to the LinkedIn Git Clients Virtual Summit. I'm so pleased that you've come to, to see my session today. I hope you've enjoyed all the other amazing sessions that are part of this awesome, awesome online event. Today, I'm going to be showing you how you can get 500,000 followers on LinkedIn. Uh, I've also packed this session in with tons of great content tips to help you, whether it's your personal profile or your company page, get more from LinkedIn. So with that being said, let's dig in to the session today. So first of all, who am I? My name is Daniel Disney. I'm not related to Walt Disney. I think I have to use that as a disclaimer every time I speak or train. Um, I'm a LinkedIn social selling uh, trainer. I've worked in sales for all of my working career over 16 years from sales rep up to sales director and started to leverage uh, LinkedIn and social selling about six years ago where it really started to sort of boom into the uh, B2B and even B2B, uh, B2C space. Uh, I'm the founder and owner of The Daily Sales, which is LinkedIn's most popular page for salespeople. And I'll introduce you to that in a, in a second. Uh, I'm a keynote speaker. I'm a social selling and, and LinkedIn trainer and, and also an author of the Million Pound LinkedIn message, which I'll show you at the very uh, end of this session. So here's a bit of an insight into the numbers, the things that I've achieved uh, on LinkedIn over the last five, six years. Um, so my company page, The Daily Sales, has over 480,000 followers, and that's growing by 10,000 new followers plus uh, every single month. Um, I personally have 51,000 LinkedIn profile followers. Uh, I've written over 235 articles on LinkedIn. Um, last year, in 2018, between January and December, the content that I shared on LinkedIn made over 164 million impressions um, across the whole year. Uh, I was recently named the 15th most, most influential sales expert on LinkedIn, just from my personal profile, the 51,000 followers I have there. Uh, but I was also named the first number one most influential sales expert when they factored in the, the daily sales and other experts, uh, sort of company pages as well. Um, and over the years, I've managed to generate and close over 25 million uh, in business revenue that has come from leads generated via LinkedIn. So that's just a bit of an insight into some of the numbers uh, as to why I'm here speaking to you today and, and hopefully to sort of back up the, the value that I'm going to bring to this uh, to this session. So as I mentioned, the daily sales is a, a company page that I run on, on LinkedIn. And it is essentially a content sharing brand, uh, shares content for salespeople every single day. You can see the tagline there, entertaining, motivating, educating, inspiring salespeople all over the world. Um, launched a few years back. And as you can see, this was a screenshot taken uh, just a couple of weeks ago, um, 481,525 followers. And as you can see, I mentioned we grow by about 10,000 uh, every single month. And actually over the last 30 days, our growth's actually been 18.3 thousand new followers. So I always say the 10,000 because over the last 18 months, it has never dipped under 10,000 new followers each month, but it fluctuates 10,000, 12,000. We're riding a very uh, strong performance over recent months and 18.3 thousand is, is certainly a high peak in terms of growth. So yeah, 18,000 new followers just in 30 days. This is just 30 days activity, uh, 39.6 thousand unique visitors, uh, 15.3 million post impressions. Again, that's just 30 days uh, and 2000 custom button clicks. So amazing statistics and what i'm going to show you today is how i built this from scratch so i started the daily sales as a company page on linkedin with zero followers so how i took that to where it is today uh, over what's only been uh, three and a half years now uh, so how i've achieved that and what the core lessons i've taken from that and, and also how you can essentially uh, utilize that knowledge for your personal pages or your company pages um so yeah daily sales was founded late 2015 it was just an idea I had. I started to see content was 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 big on LinkedIn back in 2015. Blogs and articles were the biggest thing back then. Um, but after sort of playing with a few memes and, and quotes, I found the engagement and traction was massive, like so much more than what blogs were yielding at the time. And what I started to notice was the engagement was just so high, but these forms of content were just scattered everywhere. So my inspiration behind the daily sales was, okay, let me try and create a central platform for, for my industry, which uh, was sales. 
so they can all come and enjoy content of value to them every single day. And, and through doing so, I get to create a community that I can then leverage. Um, when we launched, we shared one to two bits of content every single day. And we're now obviously three and a half years in with a much bigger audience uh, sharing three to four bits of, of content per day. And that tends to be the way you can continue growing uh, is to continue feeding the beast as such. Um, we share a mixture of memes, quotes, blogs, and industry relevant content. Um, we share content every single day, have done since day one, and that's big key, which I'll come into in a second. Um, the majority of content that we share is, is valuable to the to the audience. And again, we'll, we'll cover that in a bit more detail in a second. Uh, but it's been consistent growth from day one through to where we are now. It has always grown. Now, like I said, it's fluctuated. Uh, and obviously that growth has accelerated over the years, which again is, is an achievement in itself. I've, I've watched and seen many people, company pages, business pages, um, struggle on LinkedIn, whether they go through a bit of growth and then they stagnate. Um, it's not easy to maintain growth, certainly not at this scale. So I'm hoping the, the stuff I'm gonna share with you today is, is really gonna give you an insight into how you can achieve something hopefully very similar for your pages. So let's dig in. What are the keys to huge and consistent LinkedIn growth from experience? Number one, posting content consistently. That is a huge key. And this is again, valid for whether it's your personal profile and you're trying to build your personal brand, or whether you run a business or um, work in marketing, whatever it may be, whether you are trying to grow the business brand, consistency is key. You need to be posting at least one piece of content every single day. That is crucial. If you're a salesperson, like I was and am still, um, you know, it's not that difficult to share at least one piece of content a day. If you're a business, you should be doing it anyway. What you can do, what helps, is schedule content in advance. So there's platforms like Hootsuite, a uh, content app. I use Buffer at the moment. Um, super easy. They're all so easy to use. You just create, find great content, plug it in, set it for a date and time, and off you go. I'm actually going on, on holiday very soon, and I've scheduled content to go out consistently throughout that entire period. Now, I could do that. I do that uh, if I'm going to be busy. So if I'm training or traveling or speaking, whatever it may be, I can schedule content. And if you are out in meetings, having staff training days, whatever it may be, you can schedule content. So it's out there working for you. This isn't something when I say post content consistently, you don't need to sit behind LinkedIn all day long sharing and creating content. It's not that tools can help. Number two, consistency is great. Number one, but number two, make the content valuable. Now, I always describe this in my uh, in my sessions as the 80-20 rule, which is very popular in the, in the world of sales, and it is equally as valuable within the sort of LinkedIn social selling space. 80%, and this is from experience, 80% of the content I see from salespeople, from businesses, from marketing departments, isn't valuable to the audience. It's advertisement, it's testimonials, it's latest office, it's all me, 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 me content, which isn't, unfortunately, valuable to the prospects and customers you're trying to reach. What happens is it's almost autopilot. We see social media, we see LinkedIn, we see an audience, we think, right, we just need to advertise, we just need to promote ourselves. And that's not the way LinkedIn works best. 80% of the content needs to be valuable to your audience. You need to flip that right around. So the majority of content doesn't need to be about you, your products, your latest offers, your latest customers, what these customers are saying about you. It shouldn't, doesn't need to be about that. It should just be neutral stuff that's of value to the audience. So everything the daily sales shares is totally neutral and valuable to the sales industry. But what that does is it then earns you the opportunity for a maximum of about 20% of the content you share to be about you, your products, your company, or whatever it may be. Two things are gonna happen. One, you're gonna build a much greater personal brand or business brand. But two, you're gonna drive more engagement and traffic to the advertisement style posts because you've earned that opportunity, because you've built a better, more valuable brand out there. When you do promote your stuff, people are interested because they respect you more. <laughs> you haven't just jammed adverts down their throat all of the time. Plus, you're going to attract more followers because people are only going to follow your page if they're getting something for it. I'm not going to follow your company page or your personal profile if all you're going to share is content that's not valuable or relevant to me. So the way you do that is share valuable content. It can be informative, entertaining, motivating, inspiring. Just make it relevant. If you're selling to software, for example, and your target audience are software leaders, directors, etc., 
then share content of value to them. Latest industry insights, software trends, software key information, latest news, all that kind of stuff. Find that information, turn it into engaging content, whether it's blogs, webinars, white papers, all different forms, share it out there, but give 80% should be of value to the audience, then you earn the 20% opportunity to promote yourself. Number three, drive growth at the start. So when you start, it's an uphill climb. I started with zero followers. When I launched the daily sales, there were zero followers. And those first few months, maybe first year, that's that's where the hard work needs to happen. You need to drive that growth. It's not just going to happen even if you're sharing the best content ever. When you don't have an audience, you need to manually really push it up that hill. Now, you will get to a tipping point. I think I found the tipping point to be around the 10 to 15,000 follower mark. Once you start to get a decent audience like that, that's when you're going to start to get traction a lot easier. So now and sort of past that point, as long as I shared content consistently, the audience would then do all of the engagement that would push it further out into the LinkedIn world, which would then attract followers, more engagement, etc. But at the start, when you've got smaller audiences in the tens or hundreds, you just need to manually push it. So for example, encourage content engagement. So when I started the daily sales, I would always say, follow the daily sales for more great content every single day. I had to do that for you know the first few months at least. And what that did, it just helped encourage people to, to go that step. Again, when you get to that tipping point, it will happen naturally because you'll have more people engaging in it. It'll be reaching more people and everything will start to come towards you. But at the start, you need to push it up. Actively promote your page. So promote it on people you know's pages. Try and find industry influencers that can promote it. Any way that you can get your page in front of people, do it. Um, and incentivize following. I used to run competitions, um, things that will give people a reason to follow. Work with companies. If you're in an industry, find authors and you know try and get them to give you a book that you can give away. It benefits them because they're going to advertise the book to your growing audience. Um, and people are attracted to things like that. If you're offering a free book to a follow, that's a nice, easy win. So drive that growth at the start. Number four, learn what content works best. So consistency is good, valuable content is good, but it needs to be good, high-performing content. Um, see what forms of content are performing. Is it video? Is it memes? Is it photos? Is it statuses? Is it blogs? See what's performing best in your industry. Um, and also what subjects. So what, what subjects are hot topics right now within your space? Um, best way to do that is to study, read, listen to industry relevant content. Immerse yourself. I've done this since the day I started using LinkedIn and will continue to do it to this day. I will make sure I'm fully immersed in the industry that I work in so that I know the topics and the forms of content that are performing best because it changes. Like I said, when I started on LinkedIn, articles were the big thing. So I made sure I mastered and, and pushed out consistent articles. Now it's it's a real mixture. Um, it's posts, it's photos, it's videos. All these things are creating the sort of ultimate balance of content. So look what's working in your industry to your prospects and your customers. Number five, adapt to content changes. So when things do change, and they will, make sure you're ready to change with it. Uh, last year, so in 2018, video was launched late 2017 on LinkedIn and about March time in 2018, LinkedIn realigned the algorithm to video and gave it a massive push. Now, because I was fully immersed in the space and, and, and studying it all, I noticed the performance of video rocket very quickly. So what did I do? I capitalized on it. And between March, I think it was about May, due time, when they sort of rechanged it or balanced it all out a bit. I was able to capitalize on that huge growth and I gained so many followers in that time, anywhere between 50 to 100,000 new followers just in a period of months by just sharing, not just sharing, but sharing a lot of good video content. So look at how the content is changing. One of the things that's coming up now, LinkedIn Live. It is not going to be long before that's rolled out to everyone. We're already starting to see massive growth in the engagement for those. So keep an eye on the things like that that you can then start to dabble in and be ready. So when it does happen, you're there to capitalize on those algorithm changes. Cool. So those are the kind of key things that have helped me grow an audience of, of 500,000 followers, uh, continuing to grow that audience. Um, those are the core things that help that. Now, what I wanted to do, obviously, at the heart of all of this is content. 
So content on LinkedIn is crucial to big growth. That's what social media is all about. It's content sharing platforms. So what I wanted to do was give you a bit of an insight and, and some top tips on how to create some of the best performing bits of content on LinkedIn right now. So here are some overview top tips and I'm gonna break down into a few of the popular forms. First top tip is do it properly. It could be the angle of which you're taking the photo. It could be the brightness that you add into the photo to create a lighter photo. It could be the background to which you're recording a video. Um, all these things, try and take time to make sure you do it right. I, I saw a video, um, it was late last year, and I took my hat off to the company. Anyone, any person, any company that's getting out there in video on, on LinkedIn, it's a big step. But unfortunately, this person hadn't taken the time to think it through and they had a dirty shirt on <laughs> they were stood in front of a very dirty dingy wall stains everywhere and it didn't really paint a good picture for the company maybe taking a few minutes to find a better location make sure you're dressed in clean attire would have had a much better impression so do it properly use humor in balance and that's probably one of my biggest tips is is balance i've seen a lot of people come into linkedin and they start using one form of content, it could be video, it could be long form posts, and they get good traction. And so they keep doing the same thing. And then they keep doing the same thing. And they keep doing it, and they keep doing it. And they just repeat it over and over. And they'll ride a nice little high bit, and then they'll drop. And unless they change and adapt or balance it out, they will just end up a no one again. Now, it's important to have that balance. So if you're gonna really want to grow that audience, don't just share one form of content, share all the forms of content. Keep a nice balanced diet of content out there. Humor is a good part of that. Humor just breaks through the noise. And find industry relevant humor. I find humor relevant to the sales industry, but if you work in software, if you work in print, if you work in pharmaceuticals, whichever industry you work in, it will be humor relevant that will tap into your prospects and customers' pain points and it'll make them laugh. And it will just show them that you're a human, whether it's a company or an individual, that you're a human being, you're not just someone trying to sell something. Uh, use quality images and text. So again, take the time to take good photos, find good photos. Make sure your, your text is as clear and crisp as possible. Look for keywords. I've seen some amazing blogs and articles, brilliantly written, but their titles are terrible. So look for keywords and, and standout titles that can bring your articles to life. Use video, again, such a powerful performing piece of content at the moment and only growing um, in LinkedIn. Try and include statistics. We all know a lot of stuff on social media is just opinion <laughs> or theory. And actually people love it when you can come out with cold, hard facts. So if you can find it or create real data, man, LinkedIn loves that. The audience loves that. Um, have a consistent theme. It needs to be relevant to your industry. Everything I create or share, it's relevant to sales and social selling. Um, Again, relevant to your industry, just make sure you everything you do is about that. And brand it, make sure there's something that associates it with it. You'll see I've got the hashtag social selling, that's my brand. Um, and it could be yours, it could be your company name, whatever it may be, it could be a logo in the background, something that people can then latch onto. People will know this background with me, and there'll be something that you can have that just makes something consistent with the brand perspective. So let's dig into individual forms of, of content. And this is the sort of stuff I, I do in my training. So I've tried to really pack in as much value into this session um, as a thank you for joining this event. So let's dive in. Number one, LinkedIn posts or updates. Uh, so there are two forms popular on, on LinkedIn, short form and long form. So a short form one is something that might just be one, two sentences or even one or two paragraphs, very minimal amount of, of content, but they do perform well with the right the right subject, the right tone, the right message, they do perform really well. So some of them are sort of a quote from a book or a motivational quote written, and then maybe a couple of thoughts about it, or maybe questions or a debate subject around it, but it's minimal type content. They work. What I've found, and this has been top performing for nearly two years now, still performing amazing, is the long form post or update. This is where you use your full character limit, proper mini storytelling. And these have just been performing so well for such a long time. They're sort of like mini blogs, just packed with great value if you write it well. And I'll show you, I'll give you an example. So you get 1300 characters on LinkedIn and it's the top two to three lines that are visible. And this is really important because that's your bait. That's the bait on the end of the fishing hook that you cast it out into the LinkedIn world. If that's not strong, you're not going to get bites. People aren't going to open it up to read the whole thing. So you need to open it with something that's going to make people stop in their tracks and want to read it. So this is an example I did uh, a while ago. 
you don't need to sell ice to an Eskimo in capital letters. Again, if you work in sales, there's a common phrase. Ah, oh, yeah, that guy, he can sell ice to an Eskimo. It's supposed to be a compliment. And actually, my post was to sort of challenge that a little bit and sort of say that in modern day selling, you don't need to sell ice to an Eskimo. And that's not an achievement anymore. Because what's going to happen is that Eskimo is going to return that ice share a bad review on social media it's going to cause more harm than good and that was the purpose of the post but here are the key things strong opening title other key things look at the spaces the clear spaces between all of the sentences and the paragraphs this is crucial because people are scrolling and when they're scrolling if you've got chunky blocks of text it's hard to read it's not easy and it will just deter people from consuming your content so have those spaces have bullet points have capital letters when it's relevant where it makes sense but it will make it flow better It'll keep people engaged more likely to read all the way through so as you can see it flows through all the way through to the end strong message a nice end and another top tip is hashtags they haven't been a massive influence on performance of content and i can say this from fact of experimenting with lots of content as you can kind of see from the numbers and having a hashtag not having a hashtag has minimal impact if any impact on the performance of the post however literally one two weeks ago linkedin announced that they are uh, rejigging the algorithm it's a very rare announcement that they made um, but hashtags are going to suddenly become a much bigger part of content performance so i'd highly recommend doing it and actually linkedin's tips were two to three hashtags max so don't go hashtag heavy, kind of makes you look desperate. <laughs> Two to three industry relevant hashtags will have an impact slowly, bit by bit. Don't expect hashtags to suddenly rocket your performance. It won't happen yet. Uh, if or when it does, I'll be the first to let you know. But right now, do it as a, as, as just be prepared. And, and hopefully over time, you'll see it help with performance. But what's more important than a hashtag is quality content. You could have terrible content. Adding hashtags is not going to make more people <laughs> engage with it. You need to have good content first. So top tips, eye-catching headline, as I mentioned, make sure those top two to three lines are as engaging and, and catching as possible. Um, make sure you've got that clear space between sentences and paragraphs. Have two to three, four max relevant hashtags. Tag a few people, if possible and if relevant, and not all the time. I see a lot of people just, every post they do, they tag 20 people. <laughs> and again, it just comes out as desperate. So tag two to three relevant people if it's relevant and on occasion, not all the time. But again, where it works, use it and give as much value. Make it as relevant, entertaining, informative, motivating, inspiring to your prospects. It's not about you as a company or your product, it's about them, stuff that's going to be of interest to them. Number two, quotes, motivational quotes, inspirational quotes. These perform really well, again, alongside facts and statistics or data, just really punchy things. So something like this, this was actually a quote I wrote. Again, it could be a motivational quote relevant to your industry. It could be a statistic. 85% of X achieve Y with blah, blah, blah. Something that's factual and data, just strong, big words, nice and short, but again, not on its own. So don't just share the image of the quote write a status about it i don't elaborate on it but it will be exactly the same as this form of status as you can see exactly written the same fill up the full character limit um and elaborate on what it is so treat your salespeople the way the same way you treat your customers and again the whole post was just explaining where that came from what that meant and just sort of challenging some of the uh, common common uh, traits within sales so top tips, find powerful motivational quotes or inspirational quotes. Share your thoughts. Why does it inspire you? Why does it motivate you? Why is it relevant to your industry? Share industry relevant statistics. Again, chances are you'll have statistics out there from other studies. If not, create some. Do some studies. There's an amazing prospecting opportunity to create an industry research document and send it to your prospects, key decision makers, asking for their input. It's an amazing way to get your foot in the door with prospects, certainly high level decision makers, by asking their opinion. Not just trying to sell them something, you're asking for their insights. Not only do you get a foot in the door with prospects, but you also get amazing data that you can use when you're selling to them, but also to create content like this. Turn the quote into the image. So create a nice quirky image. If you've got a marketing department, use them. I use something called www.canva.com. It's free to use and it's literally drag and drop, super easy. Um, use relatable or relevant quotes. Can make it relevant to your prospects. Number three, photos or images. Again, LinkedIn loves photos. Loves photos of you, loves photos of people. Uh, and again, that could be you in the office. It could be you out in an event, out in meetings, on a way to meetings. 
tons of opportunities to take photos of yourself. What it can also be used for is opportunities to show you outside of work. And again, you use this on occasion, not all the time. But I'll give you an example of this. I did this last year, and it was after I'd spent a week um, intensively working. So I spent Monday to Friday, nine to five, delivering training. And then in the evenings between five and midnight, I was developing um, training content. So I didn't get to see my kids between Monday and Friday. I've got two boys. So when it got to the weekend, I dedicated the weekend to them, switched everything off and just went and spent time with them. And what I did, obviously, as you can see in the picture, took my uh, youngest out on a little drive around boat. My partner captured the picture. So the following Monday, I shared this picture with a post that explained how I'd spent that week, how I then dedicated the weekend to them and how I understood how challenging it could be for salespeople, for entrepreneurs, for anyone working in business, trying to balance uh, being successful and achieving great things in the world of business, balancing that with a family. And it was something that I knew would connect to a lot of my audience, prospects, customers, peers, colleagues. Um, it also did something that is very powerful in sales and it showed me as a human being. So whereas a lot of my customers and prospects only saw me as a salesperson or professional as such, so we only ever dealt in professional terms, they got to see me outside of that that I am a human being, that I'm a father, that I value my children, and try to, everything I do is, is for them. And that's a powerful message to kind of share with your prospects and customers on a semi-regular basis. I might do two to three of these per year, max. Um, but it just really helps shed away the negative stereotype of a salesperson or the coldness that can sometimes exist in, in customer relationships and just bring a much better, stronger layer to it. And, and, you know, this is nice for my prospects and customers to see a different side to me. And again, the post written in the same way that I write all my posts. So top tips, make sure the quality is good. Brightness is one of my biggest bugbears, and it's not easy um, getting the right balance. But if you've got an iPhone, for example, and I'm sure other smartphones do it as well, you can adjust the brightness quite easy. It just brings the, the, the photo to life. Um, try and share pictures of you, different scenarios so they get to know you again you're not just a voice on the phone or some letters in an email or a message you're a human being um use well the areas and filters where it can help um and take group photos with colleagues with peers with thought leaders whatever it may be again the whole point of social media is to open the doors to you your world your business's world show them the, the human side the human side of your business the human side of you that's where people buy into it. Number four, I couldn't I couldn't do this without sharing memes. Memes have been a big part, as you can kind of see from the meme wall uh, to the daily sales and my own content and brand that I've built. Memes are amazing. They're entertaining, they're humorous. And what they do is they kind of help us tap into common work-based scenarios with entertaining pictures from films, music, etc. Um, super easy to make. So I have always just used free apps on my phone to create meme content. Um, really, really easy. Just find the image, add the text, away you go. Um, be worried, but be wary. But obviously, there's you know copyright content. So be you know tread carefully with this. And if you work for a business, make sure you check with compliance, marketing, etc. In in how you're using it. And again, uh, balance is key. So you can't just share memes every day. Whilst that works for the daily sales, it's a slightly different type of brand. If you're running a company page or even a personal profile, I would recommend maybe two to three memes a month would be a nice healthy amount. Packed around more factual base, informative content, motivational stuff. Having memes just provides that nice little drop of humor here and there um, that again will just help you connect on a deeper level. And again, there will be so many ways you can find um, relevant ideas, industry relevant ideas for your industry to, to put to a meme. I always do it in one of two ways. I'll think of a scenario, find a picture that relates to it, or I'll find a picture and then find the scenario that relates to it. A couple of top tips, you know, I like to keep it quite symmetrical. So one line at the top, one line at the bottom, when you start going to two, three lines, it becomes a lot harder to read uh, and find entertaining. Tip number two, add a post with it not just a meme on its own. Sometimes if the meme is good enough, strong enough, a meme on its own is great. But again, elaborate on it. So talk about why you've shared that meme. Um, make sure it's relevant to your industry. Create your own, nice and easy. Try and avoid swearing. Um, don't get me wrong, it's, it's a unique subject. Some people are very passionate that that's them and swearing's fine. 
personally, uh, I've just always tried to be professional, and I think swearing just tips the scales a little bit. You, you don't need to swear. Anyway, this is, you know, I, there's no right or wrong with it. But from experience in, in content, if you want to appeal to, to sort of the masses, bigger audience of prospects and customers, then trying to keep it as neutral as possible could be very helpful. Avoid being aggressive or negative. Sometimes it can be easy to use memes to, to tap into negative scenarios, which is fine, but do it in an entertaining, positive way um, and make them as entertaining and relatable as possible. You want people to look at them and laugh. If it makes you laugh, if it can make your customers laugh, that is a win because that's what sales is about. It's not just about being cold and selling something. It's about creating human relationships. So that is my session done. Bit of an insight into how I built an audience of 500,000 followers and some of the, the keys to that, that that you could leverage. And also some top tips around content, some of the best performing bits of content on LinkedIn right now. So please, I hope you've enjoyed this session. I hope you've learned a lot from it. Please do connect with me. Uh, follow me on LinkedIn. Follow me on Twitter. Uh, check out my website, DanielDisney.net. I share regular content on there. And there's a newsletter that I share around LinkedIn and social selling. Um, and if you have any questions at all, Pop me a message on LinkedIn. Pop me an email, DanielDisney at the daily sales .net, um, And let me know what your thoughts were. I hope you've enjoyed it. Any questions you've got, please do get in touch. I hope you enjoy the rest of the event. And I look forward to hopefully catching up with you soon. Take care.